Hello, I'm Sally, Sally Croft, Head of Marketing and Corporate Relations here at Ericsson, covering Europe and LATAM. Welcome to our Modern Marketeer vodcast series, where you're joining us for episode two. And episode two today, I'm joined by Gina. Gina Azric, who is the CMO of Telia, which is one of the leading telecommunications brands in Sweden. I'm really excited, Gina. Welcome. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the importance of customer centricity. And I'm really looking forward to continuing a conversation that we just had around our modern marketing and what it means for the marketeer. So we're going to talk about customer centricity. When we were speaking last time, um, Gina, you talked brilliantly about how really you're developing the marketing team within Telia to really become very connected with the customer. One of the things you talked about was how um, you are walking the talk, going out there, being in the call centers, going out into the stores and really connecting directly with the customer. I was wondering, could you expand a little bit more about that program and some of the insights and findings that you've had as a result of doing such a program? Of course, and thank you for having me again. It was really an interesting talk. I love your question, Sally. <laughs> so um, what we actually have uh, as an operator, as, as we call ourselves, is this close connection to our customers. Uh, so having the ability to meet the customers, and it could be in the customer front, in customer service, or in the stores, or just actually inviting them to, and sit with them and talk with them, uh, or for our B2B customers to have regular sessions, innovation sessions, development sessions, proof of concept sessions, uh, you get that closeness that I really value a lot. And I think also uh, it could sometimes also be a stress because you have all these insights and we discussed data before you have this data. So what we do and maybe not as regular uh, I love that you call it the program. It, <laughs> maybe we should develop it as a program. But what we do is to just get that insight and then uh, see what can we do about uh, all these insights we have. So we cluster the insights into pain points and gain points. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually that's something I assume you're also quite familiar with uh, yeah. because yeah. it's a way of working in terms of developing uh, services and products. Uh, and then from especially the pain points, uh, what we do is to, is to see how can we solve this pain point. And sometimes actually we see a lot of pain points and maybe the solution is not a product or a service. Maybe it's just, you know, you just need to solve this. Mm. now yeah kind of that's super interesting and when you think about those conversations have you seen any changes um over the last few years and i'm specifically thinking about connectivity so with the pan pandemic everybody relying on the network the network becoming even more important than than it's ever been where people were having to be at home and away from their loved ones have you seen any changes over the um, importance of that connectivity through any of those insights that you've been running with your customers yeah, it's good that you mentioned the pande pandemic. Uh, I think what we were kind of almost scared of was uh, having all these people working from home. How would the network manage? Uh, now we have... Um, been investing, as you know, so much in the network that that's really the core for Telia to have uh, to be the, like the backbone in the Swedish society in terms of digital infrastructure. Uh, and we actually saw that people started to value the network in a totally different way than before. Um, before it was almost taken for granted. Uh, but at the same time, we also saw that there is a kind of intolerance to any kind of lag mm. and maybe it's specific Swedish because we're so far in the development of the network and in development of connectivity uh, but I think also it comes to the way of living that we're having today that um, we are connected like 24 7 and we just expect it to work yeah. and uh, there is no tolerance for anything else today. 
Absolutely. No, completely understand that. And uh, we we as Ericsson really love working with Telia um, to ensure that, that y- you have that network reliability for your, for your customers, for sure. So I'm wondering about the balance. And so how do you set the customer expectation through your marketing? But how do you then make sure that you balance that by meeting um, them through the delivery of the products and services? I wondered if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, I'm quite old as a marketeer, <laughs> so I come. <laughs> <laughs> you and I both. You and I both, Gina. We're both so, there. So my marketing school and branding school uh, comes from the premise that everything starts with what you deliver to the customer. That is the product and the service. So you you can't you can't. In Swedish, we say that you can't put makeup on the pig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we should phrase that in English. <laughs> I like it. I'm going to use that going yeah, forward. Yeah. Uh, so that's my simple truth. Everything starts with what you actually deliver in terms of quality. Uh, and uh, it could be design or packaging or uh, experience, but it has to, you have to walk the talk. Mm. Um So I come from that branding school and marketing school that everything starts there. And then marketing's job is actually to be really clear and to tell that story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such such good advice, good advice for whatever age you're at, Mm -hmm. um, for sure, that making sure that what you take to market and the expectations you set your customers is something you can deliver on, for sure. How do you do that in a world which is so dramatically changing so quickly. I mean, our industry specifically, we've seen such transformation from 2G, 3G, 4G, now into 5G. How do do you do that? How are you able to work internally with the teams in Telia so that the message that you're taking is, is enough ahead that you're exciting your customers, but that you know you have the confidence to deliver on that? How, how do you, how do you set that up for success internally in Telia? Well, the good thing is that we have really realized that the way in this complex world, and we talked about messiness also, is that we, we need to work much more cross-functional, or we actually call it tribes. Mm. And you have to have a tribe lead. And we talked about leading the band, and uh, this is actually uh, not a marketing band, but is it's a band across different ap- departments and you have some one leading that and putting all those people together in one room from all those different perspective that's where the magic happens yeah I love that yeah we have a very similar methodology here when it comes to tribes and what I really love about those tribe setups is that you get that different perspective Mm. So having those different perspectives in the room at the very early stage, I think really ensures that what you can take to market really um, really has more impact for the consumer or, or for the businesses as well. Mm. Certainly here at Ericsson, we, we, you know, we've been heavily investing and will continue to heavily invest in R&D. So having that R&D voice within that community, we find is a really important part of that process. Mm. So how do you work with that? That sounds really interesting. Yeah, I mean, we... Well, firstly, I think there's a, when it comes to customer insight, a a relentless focus on customer insight. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talk about the fact that we have two main priorities as a company, our customers and our employees, period. Those are the two things that we absolutely focus on. So we have real relentless focus on our customers. I think the second thing is that we're very lucky. Uh, we have, you know, very strong customer relations, you know, with, with people like yourself, Gina, we're very lucky that we have very strong connections and partners. But what we do is we encourage everyone through the organisation to look for those connections and to think from a customer centric perspective. So whether that be whether, as I said, you're in our, our research and development department, whether that you be in the marketing team, whether you be within our sales organisations, customer support, wherever you are in the organisation, we really want to make sure that we bring that customer voice into everything that we do. Mm. 
We also were very lucky um, where we, we invite our customers in because we want to hear directly um, from our customers as well. We have good relationships where our customers are very fortunate um, to be open and honest mm -hmm. with us and give us you know very good feedback on where we're doing well, but where we need to improve as well. So uh, I think that constant collaboration and building of those networks is something that mm -hmm. we have very much at the top of our mind. And I was wondering from a products and a services perspective, so so we are obviously very well connected and our relationships are, are deep and strong within your, your network team. Um, how is it that it works where you're developing new products and services? How does the marketing team within Telia play a role in those products and services development? I would say it's primarily through the voice of the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, there is this um, expression we have that you need to be curious and uh, do inquiries. Mm -hmm. So putting out questions, like really, really going deep. And uh, usually when you put out questions uh, to, it could be consumers or B2B customers, uh, I would say that those questions should go hand in hand with the behaviors. Mm. And... Uh, it's so easy just to answer anything, but actually, do you walk the talk? Yeah. It's like, I, I remember working for Arla uh, here in Sweden, and uh, we were developing a yogurt. And then uh, we put out the question, would you prefer the natural yogurt or yogurt with uh, chocolate? Like, no, 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 no. For breakfast, only the natural yogurt. <laughs> but then actually people <laughs> yeah. uh, have strawberries and blueberries and chocolate uh, and whatever. So, so you do something in practice, but yeah. you say something else. Yeah. Uh, so from um, an insight perspective, just looking, asking the inquiries and then looking into the behaviors. That's the main thing. Yeah, that's interesting how you tie those two things together. Yeah, exactly. Do you see any difference when you're thinking about insight and that customer expectation when it comes to B2B or B2C? Um, do you see any differences? And also, do you take any different actions when it comes to those two different audiences? In some way, it's it comes from the same core. Mm -hmm. And the core comes to uh, what what needs do we see out there i would say that the difference with the b2b customers is that we can do development much more together mm. and uh, it's the best development we can actually do when we do that we tie us really really close with consumers they many times they can maybe express their needs but we need to do the development for them mm -hmm. uh, in terms of services and technology etc because they don't have that knowledge so I would say that's the main difference we have so much more competence and knowledge within the b2b customers than within the b2c mm. that's interesting because you're then talking about the role of marketing when it comes to education as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And when we think about um, education and, and enablement, um, um, we, when we're thinking about that, we're also thinking about how do we enable our internal teams, so our employees, to have the best conversations when they're connecting with mm -hmm. their customers as well. So from a marketing perspective here at Ericsson, we also think about where we, where we are able to take our materials and the way that we are expecting our people to connect with customers and how we help them to do that. So we talked about in the first episode about mm -hmm. storytelling, yeah. and that's one of the things that we've been really investing in when it comes to our engineering community of really how do they frame what the problem statement mm -hmm. is and then start to tell more stories mm -hmm. and how to ask those um, questions of the audience mm -hmm. as well and the customers that they're talking to. Mm -hmm. Do you see from a storytelling telling perspective are you using that as a way of gathering insight when you're connecting with any of your customers as well particularly on the b2b side yes i remember when we developed um, uh, we have uh, a service that we called um, the it department as a service actually as a subscription okay yeah uh, and that that comes exactly from that way of working sitting with um, small and medium enterprises and seeing how they struggle and uh, what's the story of their everyday life and their story was very much it's just so it gets so complicated you know you, you need to have the 
understanding telco and then you have to understand IT and that I don't have time because I'm building up my business and I need to focus on my customers. Uh, so understanding their everyday story, that actually created this great service called the IT department as a subscription service. Yeah. So they said, okay, we'll take care of it. Yeah. You can just focus on your customers and we'll just fix the mess for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's fascinating, isn't it? Because if you can get to the heart of what the challenge is of the customer that you're mm. talking to, but you have to anchor that, as you said before, into the behaviours. So mm. what is the reality of the world that they're living in? And therefore, then how do you solve the problem for them? Mm. And how do you feed that back? So I'm, I'm always fascinated, you know, Telia is a large organisation mm. like Ericsson. And so, um, and with high expectations of working at pace, you know, that's, mm. that's a part of being mm. in, in this industry. How do you then, how do you connect that insight back into your organisation so that then those products and services can then be developed and really to, to deliver on a customer pain point? Mm. Yeah, so it, everything starts with... Um Let's say um, someone meets a customer and they realize, wow, th this is a real problem. Comes back home, so to yeah. say, to home base and starts talking about that. And then put some people together in the same room. It could be like inside people from the marketing team. There could be someone from the IT or from um, the network and that's where we come to to this tribe set up mm -hmm. and uh, coming back to that's where the magic happens and then someone starts to draw you know and uh, oh we could do it this way and that's where it starts actually but then of course we have this process that you need to follow and you have an investment board and you do a business case so everyone has their role in this band that they play and uh, the amount of ideas, I assume here in Ericsson also, mm -hmm. there are so many ideas. Yeah. I think the, um, the biggest problem is to pick the right ones <laughs> almost and to understand that this is something you could scale. Yeah, yeah. We Very similar challenge. And mm -hmm. one of the things that we've been doing um, here at Ericsson is... Um, is, is to take a mindset of experimentation. So you don't need everything to be fully fledged out. You don't need to have all of those things in line before you can go and experiment. And we have, we have boundaries around that experimentation, of course. Um, but what we're trying to do is to really encourage people because we found that people needed everything documented, everything exactly as it needed to be before that they were able to go out and experiment. And so we, we're trying to take more of that experimentation mindset so that we can then start to see, OK, well, that's an idea. Then it does have, you know, um, uh, it does solve a customer need. It does have, you know, all of the, the requirements that we need it to have um, as, as a company. Now we can then go and put that into a, a fully fledged customer program so experimentation has certainly been one of those mindsets that we've been mm. trying to adopt um, so do you have a do you have a, a way of working with experimentation or it's just it just happens or how do you know do well I mean we're an engineering company so mm. we we love a methodology um, um, but what we've been trying to do is to try and say okay well we've got what we call our sort of focus areas so we have a set of behaviors um, across Ericsson that we expect of our teams and so what we're asking people to do within the sphere of those behaviors to look at some experimentation so we try we we, we do have some templates and we do have mm. some structure but it's almost that we don't want that to get in the way of the experimentation mm. either. So we're, we're very much at the early stages of that mindset shift. And because it's, it is a way of working and, and, a, and a mindset, we're trying not to put too much rigor around it. Otherwise, we might stifle yeah. the experimentation. <laughs> <Get> <laughs> but what I'm seeing actually is that, that the marketing um, team, I mean, are loving that that mm. kind of approach. I've mm. seen a real adoption within my own organisation of that experimentation. And we've seen some results already where, mm. you know, we've really sort of opened up the question, if you like, or the challenging statement, the problem that we're trying to solve and really making time mm. for that kind of mindset of problem solving and experimentation has been one of the things I think that has made us successful within within the marketing mm. team. Mm. How do you, just thinking about that, how do you make time to 
to have those moments of reflection? How do you make time for yourself, actually, Gina, as a, a very busy CMO? How do, how do you carve out time so that you're able to, to have that space of reflection and maybe think differently on topics? Mm. Well, uh, I'm kind of privileged because when I was a teenager, I started doing yoga. And this, this was so many years ago. So with yoga and meditations particularly, I found that that creates a space. And uh, within that space, everything can happen. Mm. And uh, I need that space to actually be creative and uh, go really deep in insights. So very regularly, like once or twice a year, I go on silent retreats for at least a week, 10 days. And I sort things out there. And uh, at the same time as I sort things out there, I go really deep in um, my inquiries. And uh, since we love our job, usually you do that when you work with brand and marketing. It's part of your passion in life. So uh, those 10 days of silence, it, it's a lot of, you know, branding thoughts, marketing thoughts and helping me to sort things out. I love that. Mm. I, do you know what I really love about that example, Gina? And I think it, it does lead back to the conversation we're having about leadership in our first episode mm. is leading by example. And you taking that time out for you to give yourself that space must be incredibly empowering to your team. I, I really think that as leaders, if we don't lead by example, mm. if we say, oh, you must, you know, the summer break's coming up now. Mm. So if we say to everyone, oh, have a good summer, but at the same time, we're, we're not disconnecting. Yeah, exactly. So, um, oh, I really love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And thank you so much for coming. This is the thank end you, of our episode two. Um, thank you very much for everyone um, for joining us today. And I look forward to connecting with you on episode three. Thanks. Thanks, Ellie.